should probably turn off the air conditioner while we're actually recording, huh? Oh, is it making sounds? I can't hear it. It sounds fine to me. You can't hear that? I mean, I can hear it just fine, but it just sounds like an air conditioner. It's fine. Yeah, it's the bottom dial. Uh, two ticks to the right. Three, all right. I guess I guess uh, I guess I have to use clockwise or counterclockwise because right and left exist in both directions when you're uh, looking at a circular dial like Please. that. I usually have a really hard time figuring out what clockwise and counterclockwise is. Wait, what do you mean when looking at a circular dial? If if you're both facing the same way and you say right, why it should just go no? Well, because the, you know if one, if if the top is going right, then the bottom's going left. If the top's going left, then the bottom's going right. Oh my god, I hate it's it. Perpetual motion. <laughs> So I got to do clockwise and counterclockwise. That's why that exists. Mm. It's good to know. Than a, yeah. <laughs> Clocks work on a different plane. Well, the, you're wonderful. Talk, you're talking about you're talking about you're talking about like a like degrees. You're talking about radius instead of. Uh, I'm not talking about any of that. You are. <laughs> it was the ro- it was the royal you. It was the you that means me. Uh... Hey guys, welcome back to Rough Draft. <laughs> uh, this... Welcome back to episode one. Yeah, now that we've actually got a name for it that uh, I guess we've committed to now, because mm. now this is like an actual episode. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I got my boyfriend's approval, so I think that's really all that matters. Yeah, he's he, he's he's watching us right now, making sure we don't uh, step out of line. Uh, he's the producer now, I guess. Is <laughs> general every, whatever he says goes. He hasn't listened to the first episode though, so how do you know? Actually, no, I don't think he, he did because he, he said he said earlier that he didn't. Oh, he said he didn't know what it was about. It'd be pretty hard to listen to the whole. I guess I guess oh. we were, I guess we were pretty. Tangential. I don't know if I sent it. Did I send it to you? I did not send it to you. I, I guess you... that's my fault. All right. Well, welcome back. We'll be welcome better. Welcome back to Rough Draft. This is a uh, <laughs> this is a podcast where we inform five of you about what's going on with our uh, creative process. We discuss the creative process in general. We talk about what we've been working on, what we've been struggling with, uh, things that we've learned, uh, things of that nature. Uh, to borrow one of Max's favorite phrases, turn off your phone, you goddamn ingrate. Oh, my okay, yes. phone is on okay, pilot. Yes, I will. <laughs> okay, yes, I will. I'm sorry. Turning that off real um, quick. There we go. Oh, Maxwell Martinez says the next three train is 15 minutes away. I literally said that over an hour ago. Yeah, I was really busy. Obviously. I was playing video games. Okay. <laughs> and that's where we're at in the creative Speaking process. Speaking of the creative process. <laughs> so uh, recently, I've been thinking a lot about genre. The way that we look at it. And the, and the way that we approach creating things in different genres. I feel like I like things in a pretty broad range of genres. I feel like when you look at my favorite movies, I like pretty much everything except for horror. Uh, and that's less of thinking it's yeah, it's horror good. is not good and, and more that I'm just a big baby. No, it totally gets scared. Like I said, that's... A lot I, of horror movies involve needles or sharp objects in some capacity. And needle, I, I, a lot of horror movies A lot of horror movies needles. have needles or, or, or other of, sharp objects. When I think of horror movies, I don't... It's like like, 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 like Requiem for a Dream? Oh, that That okay. movie, that was one of the scariest things I've ever seen. Oh, I thought No, but that, actually, though, I don't think I can ever I thought that, that was just a snuff film. But, uh... <laughs> that's, it was a different kind of snuff. Um, um okay. Uh, I mean, I guess that's fair. I, when I think of you, I think of comedy essentially just because i yeah. feel like that's something that you've mainly focused on and the I totally, most <laughs> and i totally know why and it's because i uh am less afraid of comedy than everything else okay why is that because comedy is supposed to be one of the scariest things to actually do as See, far as like for me i well. feel like I, for me i feel like i'm risking less when i when i do comedy okay uh, I, I feel like if i if i put a joke out there I guess it's different with like stand up. With stand up, if you put a joke out there and they don't react, it's like, oh, well, now I feel awkward. And I have bombed on stage before, and uh, <laughs> that was. <laughs> Sorry, did you say boned or bombed? Uh, both. Okay. Uh, bombed. Well, yes, I've bombed on stage. I guess boned is also a pretty apt. Uh... Let's say boning on stage is something completely different. Yeah, it's also something I've <laughs> got experience with. Okay. Good. Um. So I, I guess in that sense, yeah, I can see the risk there. Uh, but when it comes to like creating like comedic content, uh, whether it's a YouTube video, whether it's a short film, mm-hmm. um, I get a lot less anxious when I know other people are watching it if it's comedy. If somebody doesn't take it seriously, I'm totally fine with it. Because okay. as a comedy, you're not really supposed to. Whereas with, with something that's more dramatic, something that's heavier, uh, I feel more like um, if I write something that's supposed to be more... Uh, more revealing or more like hey this is about something that i this is about how i feel about something uh and they don't respond correctly to that like that's something i want them to take seriously and so if they don't and they're like oh that was garbage then it's like all right well i guess i'm garbage 
But with comedy, if they're like, oh, that was garbage, I'm like, yeah. At least, it was just, at least it was a stupid joke. How interesting. See, comedy scares the shit out of me, but I... I guess. Which is funny because you're you're an abundantly funny type of individual. See, that's also something that I've been thinking about lately, especially since since you brought up uh, this theme of genres. Um, I've always been told that in in most of what I do, uh, as as far as like writing, as far as acting, as far as uh, dancing, I'm better with comedy. Uh, but that's never something that I've spent the time cultivating. That's just what comes out naturally does think, that make sense i think it's because you're honest i guess i, I you're honest and blunt and, and a lot of comedy just comes from that i guess so i guess that's fair you can be like you can do because a, a lot of problem when it comes to people who can't sell comedy usually uh it's usually that they hit the joke too hard mm -hmm. you know and they're like hey this is supposed to be funny and they uh they, they really lean into it Right, but you'll just you'll just you'll just state it. Okay. Like you'll just you'll just say the joke, and you'll do it so flatly and so like, this is how it is. Like like with back to one, like your jokes work the best out of pretty much everybody's. I think in back to one, just because your delivery is just this is what it is. Mm -hmm. and you're, you're also very articulate. I, I just mispronounced articulate. <laughs> I think, I think that's great. I'm just I'm just gonna let you like keep complimenting me. No, you're you're very you're very <laughs> articulate, and a lot of comedy is in um, <laughs> a lot of uh, Miles just sent a message that he wants me to finish uh, finish the podcast so that I can play more video games with him. All right, well we can. I guess on. I can actually take my headphones off. I don't need to listen back to this. Okay. Uh, so the point is, uh, you're very articulate, and a lot of comedy, at least when it comes to like the actual dialogue, mm -hmm. is in the consonants. Like, you can, like, a punchline... A lot of a lot of things are in the consonants that people That's just fair. like to forget. <laughs> no, it, it's fair, because, like, a, a lot of... The the actual structure of the language, some things just sound funny. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of strong consonants generally are funnier. Okay. A, lo a lot of... K a lot of... G See, and this is... This specific... All of, the, all of the lovely things that you're saying about me are specifically why comedy scares me, because you have found a way to kind of like break down and describe exactly why these things are funny. You know why a joke is structured the way that it is, and you understand why comedy, why comedy works and why comedy doesn't. Whereas for me, I don't feel like when it comes to comedy that I'm, I'm that self-aware. I don't feel like I have that knowledge. I, I just do what I do, and I hope that it comes out fine, and I just kind of, like, accept whatever genre people put it in. So if it happens to be funny, then I'll take that it's comedy. If it happens to be serious, then I'll take that it's drama or whatever. But I think when it comes to genre, I get confused when that, when that becomes part of the dialogue of what I do. Does that make sense? When I, That's fair. When people say, are you, what are you? Are you, like, are you God, a writer? I, are you, I, oh, well, I guess in that, like... Um, and when, so that's why when I, sorry to cut you no, off, go, but going back to that, it's just like, that's why I, I, I think of you with comedy because I know that you, you understand comedy and it's one of those things where in order to break the rules, you have to know the rules and you know the rules so well that you can take a joke and you can take something and you can make it funny by warping it a little bit or going a little bit left of center or, or finding some sort of new way to, to tell a story or to show your perspective. Whereas me, I just kind of trust that whatever the fuck happens, happens. Does, does that make sense? And that's probably yeah. why you it's, it's have like, it's like a science less for me. fear. You, it's something that you know a little bit more. It's something that you've thought about and analyzed a little bit more. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? I guess. That was something that I did when I was younger, I guess, just because that was like more of like a self-defense mechanism than anything. Okay. It's like I had to be the funny guy because I couldn't really be much else. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it was like learning uh, from times when I would try to be funny and it wouldn't go over well. And uh, just like, why did, why, did I, why did I screw that up? And then uh, when something does work, like, okay, well, why did that work? And I don't think in my head I was, like, trying to, like, really learn comedy. But I think I was just so afraid of screwing up when I, when I tried to be funny uh, that I, I, I learned a lot of these lessons just by... Okay. 
fear necessity. <laughs> I uh, guess that's fair. So it's uh, well. So it's not fun for me. I don't enjoy any of this. Oh my god. It's all it's all terrifying and terrible. I mean, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> this all sounds like it's coming from a place of fear, and that's why you love it. That's where that's most why, that's where most of my life comes from. Well, no, I, <laughs> that's actually what <laughs> what I wanted to ask you about specifically because you said comedy, the the genre of comedy makes you. I guess I don't, it makes you hard. It gets you excited because you know it, you understand it, you get it. Um, but what genres specifically would you say you lack confidence in or you feel like you don't know fully how to just delve into in the, I guess, in the grander sense of this is what people are looking for when they look for drama or romance? Or... Well, I know when it comes down to like... When it comes down to like the actual screenplays, I know action scares me a lot just because... I'm more of a words person, mm -hmm. and uh, so t telling a story that is largely, which is why film as a medium is probably a bad idea for me. Uh, telling 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 a story in a in a medium that is like primarily visual, uh, more so than like theater, because like with the with theater, like you know, a script you, you put in the words, and you know, the director and everything, they figure out mm -hmm. like like the blocking and all that, but you're mostly telling the story through the words, and you can you can have interesting visuals, but like you're on the stage, and you're kind of living in that space with film. You have to create an entire, every shot, you have to create an entire fake reality to view like this particular line through one particular lens and do it multiple times to try and get it like the right way right, but and just link like, it all together. But just like you said specifically for uh, plays, a director sets the blocking and director sets all of that it's not your job to figure out exact to know exactly and to figure out specifically exactly how everything's going to be shot because if you have all of that in, in a, your in head a, in a screenplay in a like, screen well yeah in a screenplay if you have every single thing in your head um and you give that to a director you're going to be nothing but disappointed because they're going to have their own vision they're going to have an entire crew that has no their but what own. i mean is like but if, but if you're not telling the story visually like like with like with a play like you can you with a with a with a play script you can just put out the script with just like the words maybe some stage direction here or there like just some light stuff like oh they exit they enter and people will pick it up and run with it with a screenplay if you don't have action throughout all of it nobody's going to be interested you, like you, like you you have to actually be dictating a lot of that. I feel like you're putting yourself in a hole there. I don't. I don't necessarily agree with that. I find, think a, find a screenplay that doesn't have. Are you kidding me? What's it? My my dinner with Andre. Uh, anything by that specific gentleman. Uh, okay, anything but, okay, Kenneth but... Lonergan, which I know you love Kenneth Lonergan. Like, I'm sorry. The the beauty in you can you can count on me, and even in Margaret, is I I'm is it Margaret or Margot? I saw it once and I liked it. Regardless, I'm pretty sure Margot. That just sounds like a more interesting film title. <laughs> I think it's probably Margaret. <laughs> Anyways, probably. Um, the beauty in those scripts is specifically his dialogue, the That's the, fine. the you... subtleties in what they're saying, and sure, yes, the cinema being a visual medium absolutely can be daunting. I'm sure. However. There are so many ways of making the words specifically work for a camera. Shakespeare and love, that 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 is so word heavy. Anything by Tom Stoppard is crazy not, word heavy, and saying, it still works. I'm not saying that you don't have words in it. What I'm saying is that when there is action, like you've got to actually like. Oh, so uh, block you're it specifically out. talking like, about like, action? Yeah, like when you're like when you're, like, when you're talking about like a okay. like like we're talking about like a play. If somebody has like a sword fight, it'll just say like they fight. Oh. And that'll be the thing. It'll be like the choreographer will no. figure that all that all out later. There will there might be some plays where they're like actually there's a very specific way this needs to play out. You might be Thornton Wilder or something where you want to control every aspect, but like no, that's, I just know a lot of fight scenes, a lot of like successful fight scenes like uh, focus I'll, allow for a fight director or a fight choreographer or something on these lines, and as well as like as well as in movies. And you also have with all the action movies. I'm sorry, I'm just playing devil's, devil's advocate here, but with action movies, you have almost anything by Joss Whedon, who I know you don't have the most respect for. I guess I, I don't, don't know. I don't know, but all of Joss Whedon is it's it's extremely dialogue heavy, and sure, a lot of that, the. But I'm saying that like even. If you look at those scripts, though, mm -hmm. even then there will still be a lot more direction than you would find in like the average play. Okay. Even even when something is word heavy, it's still like 
they still write about like what position they're in, what what reaction they have. Like those 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 things are actually in there. And and like I said, like when it when when it comes to like a fight, like the fight needs to be more painstakingly planned out. Um, so like action, so like writing an actual action film, uh, just because it's so. To, to, to write it in a way where people can actually, as they're reading, like a whole like five minute stretch with no dialogue, which is something that is, it has been done in plays now and then. That like there there will be some plays where it's like there's not actually a lot of words here. This is just mostly like a physical piece. Like there will be plays like that, but it's very rare. Um, with like film, like with an action script, they'll be like, hey, here's like eight pages of nobody actually talking, They're but but a lot is a happening. Lot of, like, badass. And it's here. just how do you like link all that together and so thinking in those terms of like this action leads into this action so this happens like writing in that sense like is not well the action strong suit. of course it's not your strong suit is that something you actively want to make your strong suit or? yeah that's one of the things that i that's one of the things that the reason i've been thinking about genres is because like the stuff that i'm writing right now is very uh action and switches between a lot of genres and so I've been writing those kinds of scenes is right now. Is it specifically Sparks, or is this other things? It's involved Sparks, and then it's been a couple other things as well. Okay. Um, but I'm just writing a lot of things right now that are outside of my wheelhouse, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think it's funny that you know, we've got like comedy and drama, and that scene is like the uh, is, is like the dichotomy. And then you got all these other genres, but they're not like part of the comedy. They're like, so do you like do you like comedy or thrillers? Nobody ever says that. It's like, do you like comedy or drama? Mm -hmm. I just find that interesting. And then, like, all these other genres seem to be under the blanket uh, of, of drama. Like, a thriller is like, oh, it's a drama, but it's a thriller. Or, oh, this is an action movie, but, you know, it's a drama. Or they have, like, an action comedy, I guess, but they gotta, like, point out that it's action comedy. Nobody ever I mean, says, oh, it's an action drama. I mean, isn't isn't that kind of just a reference to the, the history of theater and the history of, of entertainment in general? I don't know. I never got an education. Oh, of course you didn't. <laughs> like, <laughs> because our education was a scam. No, that's a lie. Um, we, we did have, yeah, we like, yeah. When theater started, there no, was I mean, uh, there was comedy and drama, and then I guess there was histories. There was that Shakespeare, but, Shakespeare wrote comedies, dramas, and histories. Yeah, but even then, I, I guess there were tragedies instead of dramas. But oh, well. I mean, there was also theater well before Shakespeare. Regardless, what are you talking about? There was more. <laughs> um. I guess there was I'll, I'll tell you when you're older. Okay. I guess. I guess. There I was, guess there was Moliere or something. I thought Moliere came after. He I'm, did. He, he did. He okay. Did. Good. 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 I was like, I don't, I know, I don't I know, know enough that about that. Regardless, I think that's this, that's essentially where the comedy and the drama comes in um, when people think about what they're into. But I also don't I think, think about like, people... is it fun or is it serious? I yes. guess. Is, I guess is the general breakdown. Genre specifically is not something that I focus too much on. Same. It's something that I allow people to kind of tell me what it is. Does that make sense? For as, as far as my personal work goes, as far as what I do, I don't go out and say, and this is probably bad, it's um, bad marketing on my part, but yeah. for me, I don't go out and say, I'm a comedian. I'm really funny. You're going to find me really funny, and that's what you should hire me for. You should. I say, no, but that's... that's <laughs> I guess, but at the same time, I just like, if I see a role or if I see something that I think I could potentially do well and that resonates with me, I'm just going to go out for it and say, this is what I'm good at. I'm not going to try to limit myself in saying like, oh, I am I really resonate with this specific description of this character, but I only do comedy, so I'm not going to do that. Or I only do dramas, so I can't really... Yeah, like, dividing yourself that way would be, like, just really Right, stupid. and so, and is, and the same way with, with what I write. What I write, um, for the most part, is is based in comedy, I think. You've, you've read some of my stuff. It's A lot of it is humorous. Yeah. Um, I know I did send you a script that I didn't find very humorous, but I do believe has many, many humorous moments. The Estrella's Room that I wrote, the... What about the grandma and the granddaughter and the pregnancy? It's oh, all yeah. vague. Anyways, yeah. Um, I was pretty proud of that script. It was... movie with the pregnant grandma. Yep. When I write, I don't specifically sit down and write and say, I need to write something funny or I need to write something dramatic. I find out... I find out, I guess, something specifically in, in me or what I'm experiencing that I feel compelled to kind of 
explore and articulate a bit more and expand upon and through that the vessel that I must create for through there has to be a human and I just try to figure out who these humans are and how they how they interact and how they experience life uh, and how they kind of defend themselves and survive through their their circumstances and sometimes their shitty circumstances where they find humor in them. I believe most people try to be humorous at some point in time, or most people are humorous whether they know about it or not. Most most people communicate in humor because it's a comfortable. It's it's something that they're comfortable with. It's something that allows levity in conversation. So when trying to get something that you want from someone, a good tactic usually is to be humorous and to be funny and that oftentimes comes out in my scripts and so I'm told that I'm a comedy writer but once again that's not something that I actively reach for that's not something that I want to say that I'm good at I just say that I just try to write how people exist and that's also not how most people write or I mean I, I, I can't speak for that but I can't say I, that's not how I know it depends how on what they're write. writing for Right. I feel like it's when you when you get into writing like more from like a business standpoint that it yes. becomes it becomes more of like and I'm not. the genres <laughs> and how you sell it and that's something I've been having to like right like if I got if I if you or I got cast to write the next big like yeah, sitcom cast. or got cast sorry they, they, they had auditions they right. come in a room and write actually I think that's the, the... you do you do you, you do audit you yeah they they will audition writers there we go um no if. <laughs> If, if you or I got hired to write for a new sitcom, we would have to then specifically focus on that that medium, yeah. that, you know? When there's money involved, they get more specific. It's more of like a checklist. It's more of like, this is what we want. It's less about, this is the story that we want to hear, and it's more about, this is the product that we want to sell. Right. And so then that becomes, uh, you know, what genre you're hitting, because that is... the because that's influenced by the demographic they want to hit. Um, and it's... Because I know personally, like, I get annoyed with... It feels like every movie now that has to be, like, five genres, like, hyphenated. Yes. And, uh, and they'll be like, I hate the term dramedy. Because to me, a good drama just already has some comedy in it anyways, because that's what humanizes the characters and makes us relate to them better. So I'm like, I don't think you need to call it I not mean, a drama. But there's also... I mean, there's also very specific, like... Um, they're all dramas that have like, no I guess really good, structure yeah. choices yeah. Um, that are that have nothing to do with just like these people. I just think that, for example, the, the kids aren't all right. Didn't need to be billed as a as, as a comedy. I thought it was. I thought it was called the kids are all right. It probably is. Yeah, but the kids aren't all right. Is the offspring what do you mean? song? Yes. It was one of the most depressing things I've ever seen. Uh, you've it was, seen it more. Was really, you've seen more depressing. It was really good. I mean, yeah, I've watched back my own work. But, uh, no, it, it was really good. But, like, the way it was advertised was like this. It was, oh, well, it, was, it was like comedy of the year. And, like, we went to watch it, and it's like, everybody is unhappy. Well, no, of course, I, absolutely. I, I found, I found a lot of humorous moments, and I thought that, I thought that, oops, sorry, I hit the mic. Um, I thought that comedy works, or dramedy works for that specifically. Um, once again, because of the writing choices that they made in, the scenarios the scenarios are humorous um the situation is humorous um and and if we're talking about how things are advertised most things are not advertised the way that they should i remember i hated the movie atonement for the longest time because it was billed to be this the romance of the year it was beautiful it was heartwarming it was epic the trailer had nothing but, but like, Kira Knightley and James McAvoy just like running to each other and falling in love and I like, watched the movie and it was not that yeah, at none, all it, it, like by the time you watch the movie like all the romance is already done yeah. like it's it's one like that's a depressing movie that's a really yeah. fucked up movie yeah. um, and it wasn't built like that and so I went in expecting to experience this beautiful moving romance and in some aspects it was but the most important aspects of it to me were not that it was it was the the girl whose story it was and i i can never pronounce his name bryony byrony bright whatever the character that character is literally the central character the one we follow the most it's ev it's who that story is about and she was completely left out of the trailer so if we're talking about how things are advertised 
you're absolutely right. The Kids Are Alright was not advertised the way that it should. However, I believe that it still is what it claims to be. <laughs> a dramedy. I guess. I just, I don't know. I would rather just have it be a drama, I guess. Mm-hmm. I, just, I, just, I just hate seeing things where it's like, oh, this movie's in five genres. It's like, oh, this is an action, this is, this, is, this is an action, this is an action comedy thriller. Why can it just be one thing? And sure, it's got elements of this other stuff, but like, at, at what point, at what point are you not actually describing? But it's, it's like with music, when they, like, indie alternative. What, is it, what does that tell you about what the music sounds like? I mean, you, like, two or three bands probably just popped into your head at that specific moment. You know the shins popped into your head. Like, yeah, but you know what? <laughs> they could have just been rock or alt rock and it would have been fine. I would have told you more. Because there, there are other bands that are indie alternative and they sound nothing like the shins. Okay, so I guess to answer your question on that, when does genre stop mattering? When you decide it doesn't matter. Genre is specifically to help okay, narrow good. things genre's done. down. Like, the genre is specifically to help you narrow things down and what you're looking for. It also is a matter of, like, why you consume what you consume. Like, why do you watch movies? Like, you know, And so if people are like, oh, I watch movies because I was on my feet for 13 hours a day and I just want to go home and I just want to watch something mindless and silly and heartwarming. So because I know that's why I'm trying to experience this. I'm not going to go to the thriller section I'm of Netflix. I'm not going to like, you know, I'm not going to go through my movie collection and say like, oh, I just need something. I just need something to take my mind off of things. I'm, I don't know. I'm going to watch. I'm, I'm going to stop listing things because I, or I giving examples because <laughs> I don't have enough off the top of my head, but something really sad. Okay. Yeah, um, so you, it, yeah, just, it, it, it allows it allows the audience to dictate and navigate what they want to experience and how they want to experience. And I guess if it's if we're talking about us as the people who are creating this, we have to kind of figure out who our audience is, and that's why genre. That's because we're selling it from them, I guess. Right. But it's just like I don't know. I just feel like I guess genres just bother me a lot. Okay. <laughs> I think that's, I think that's the general gist of what's of what's but at happening the same time, today. I think that I think that using genres. In, in a to, to describe like a very broad like like a, like a western you know like a western is a very specific thing and you can still have like a lot of stuff happen under that umbrella so people like describe I mean it just has to happen in the west but it has like a whole it has a whole like style of cinematography associated with it mm-hmm. like like Logan Logan was a western like the cinematography mm-hmm. and the and then and the pacing and like the it even comes down to like the writing like the the the, the, a, the characters a western action drama is what you're yeah saying. it's a western action drama <laughs> yeah um i mean i guess it's fair i mean my favorite western to this day is still broke back mountain um, yeah that's a western you know a lot of people and the, and the, a lot of people say that it's not a western but and, it, and, it and, absolutely... and, and they're like oh it's a gay film I'm like no the whole point is that it's it was like, taking a western and it was subverting it to be about something other than just like super i don't know whatever sorry, I don't, anyways um yeah i have problems with like a gay, the term gay film but that's my own little thing anyways yeah. like that like that like that's a genre like, t- that t- would be, you, so that would be like a, tells you nothing about a, the, a yeah. drama western romance tragedy gay film <laughs> yeah it's almost it's almost like it's a story that just has a lot of elements to it a lot of things um i mean and if that's what you're looking for at the end of a 13 hour day then go for it. i guess when you get when you, when you when you get to that point when you're listing six genres good god but i mean okay so i don't know i'm just trying yeah, to I, I, just, I, I get why they're there um yeah i'm just trying to figure out what i i guess it, with you bringing this up why what why? specifically just why? you want just why just why um just what specifically you wanted to get out of this conversation were you looking for someone to i don't know convince you that all like that the genres is a good way to figure out how to categorize things or are you just, trying I, to I debunk wanted, it i wanted, I wanted to i wanted to just, I, wanted, I wanted to debunk it i want to prove that there's no genres it's a social construct I don't know. genre is a social construct the limit does not exist there are only two genres I mean, uh, comedy, actually, that's, comedy and drama. That's literally a fact. <laughs> like, <laughs> genre is a social construct. Like, <laughs> it, yeah, it literally is. Um, um but uh, because yeah, so I guess from like a writing standpoint, yeah, it's it's like it feels limiting to approach a script and like creating the actual story. 
from from like a, I want it to be in this genre. Exactly. But then I feel like once it's written, being able to identify it, because then because then when you're talking about the cinematography, when you're talking but about. But that also, it, once again, all of these things, it, it's a matter of what you're trying to get out of it. Right now, because I have not sold any of my stuff, because I'm not writing for anybody else, because I'm solely writing based off of what I want to see and the stuff that I want to make and the stuff I want to create by myself. When I write, um, I don't have that limit. I don't have people telling me I must pigeonhole it and I must do this and I must do that. I yeah. don't have like producers and I don't have like a boss. It's, I'm, I'm my boss. I'm writing for myself. Um, but if, if you're talking about actually trying to get into a field of, uh, or trying to sell your material, uh, I guess to be, to be viewed and to be on, I don't know if you're trying to sell shit to like HBO or Netflix or whatever, um, or trying to sell it to Hollywood, then I guess you'd have to actually figure out specifically what you're looking for, why you're... Yeah. So it's either either you but write for yourself like... and you figure it out yourself, or you cater to someone else and then you find a way to make that work for you. But then it's also like, if you didn't write it, if you're coming in as an actor and you know what genre it is, do you approach it from a different standpoint? As you would approaching something else, you know? Are you, talk are you giving the the... The royal you again, or the just the, the royal or me you. specific? Because you, I mean, we only know our perspectives. Right, well, that's what so I'm we saying. If we're talking about, oh, if we're talking about my perspective specifically, um, I, I guess it would honestly just depend. Like for example, when we went and filmed that uh, that short film that Ed Wood. Uh, oh yeah, that thing. Yeah. Yeah, because he told us he's like wanted to be like a bad B movie. Yeah, he wanted to write something that was like a bad B movie, and I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't understand what that meant, so I just tried my hardest to do what I knew. And I'm sorry, that is that was as far as my acting goes, garbage. That was garbage. It was perfect for the thing. It was perfect for the thing, and I hated it. Um. But it, it, for what he was going for as a director, for what the specific scene was, it worked. And so I had to approach that in a, in a different way. I had to kind of look at that script and say, how do I, how do I give a director exactly what he wants based off of the information that I have? I can't just go in and say, well, I'm me, and so I'm going to read these lines the way that I read these lines, and I'm going to tell the story the way that I tell the story and completely disregard my director my costume my fellow actors the script you know what i mean like it's yeah. i think i think you have to it, you have to at least have a knowledge of these genres in order to deviate from them or to in order to navigate through them so i guess it's really what it comes down to is it's you know what's the story that you need to tell when, when you're when you're writing it it's like what's the story you need to tell you get it out there and you figure out okay what's the best way to tell the story and so then that becomes like what what you know like what what genre because then you start because each each of these different genres at least when it comes to film and I guess even when it comes to theater, uh, you know like there there are different conventions for different genres so you'll, you'll do things differently when you're in, like a scene you can have you can have the same scene in a in a horror film and in a comedy assuming that the horror film isn't also a horror comedy and the comedy is in a comedy horror uh, and you would have them play out entirely differently you know it could be the same 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 thing. But the lighting would be different, cinematography would be mm. different, the pacing would be different. And so I guess it's really what it comes down to is I guess when you're making the story, you know, who cares about just, genre, it's tell the story that needs to be told. Exactly. And I also think it's just a matter of, of also a thing if you need to if you need to bring genre or utilize genre as a tool and and not focus too much on it as like this big grand thing that must be that See, must the thing be is like the, the reason I followed. I, I mean, I'm doing it for like genre parodies and like the stuff that I'm writing right now. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. And so I guess with that, it's like you know when I'm writing it, I'm like, yeah, I have to write it in the most cliched way possible in this genre, mm -hmm. and that can be really fun, I guess, because I'm not expecting people to take that seriously. So I guess then that goes back to the comedy thing. If you want to specifically specifically use genre as a tool, use it. Um, and I think knowing and having the knowledge of the genre's history and of what makes the genre that specific genre, knowing all of the rules, knowing what that entails, I think I think that is important, and I think it will do, it'll only help you figure out where you wanna go. If, if 
even in the slightest way of saying like I am writing this script uh, based off of some this inspiration that I had based off of I don't Wes Anderson like I don't know like I really like Wes Anderson and I like what he does and I like his style and I like his energy and his followers whatever it is you like about this specific person you just kind of even when you're just saying what would say Wes Anderson do in this specific scene as well as incorporating that with what you would do yourself that's also kind of including a specific genre that's also kind of in some slight way you know what I mean so uh, that's 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 just my take on 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 genre you can you can let it be daunting and you can say I don't know as much about this genre as I do about another genre but at the end of the day it's it's a tool that you either can utilize and it, or you can. yeah and it's really just about what tells the story and it's also got someone's gonna figure it out whether you want to or not if you specifically somebody, say somebody will classify it, it yeah if you specifically yeah. say I'm writing this thing but I'm not classifying it and then you give it to uh, you if you give it to a producer and they read it they say okay cool so we're calling this a comedy and so when we're it comes gonna to selling it to other people selling it like a comedy and yeah. we need to let people know and then and it's just kind of like even with with acting we took the yeah. like a yeah an actor's marketing class and one of the tools that they told us to do was they had us ask all of our friends and family what actors we thought we were like and then we were supposed to narrow that all down to two or three of them and then they that told was... us they told us to go in auditions to tell people well I'm like a Taylor Swift meets a Johnny Depp meets a Elaine Stritch. That's my style. Like that's and it was garbage. It was garbage. But Ta- what they were trying to say. Taylor Swift, Johnny Depp, and Elaine Stritch walk into a bar. Mm-hmm. If you get me. Um. But what essentially what they were trying to say is. Did you say you were like Kathy Griffin? Kathy the... Griffin and Michael C. Hall. There you anyway. go. Anyway. Yeah. Um. Specifically because I look like Michael C. Hall. That's as far as that talent goes. I would not ever. I mean, same as same as Kathy Griffin. I look yeah. exactly like Kathy Just Griffin. A serial killer. But uh, <laughs> you kill I mean, what essentially what they were trying to say with that act, uh, with that uh, um, activity or anyways, find what make these people uh, marketable. Find what make these people um, approachable and accessible to an uh, to an audience, and find out what qualities you have similar to them so instead of saying i have i am exactly like this person don't even mention that person say i have this specific quality and my my usage for saying michael c hall with kathy Kathy griffin was literally a what you see is not what you get i look exactly like michael c hall when i was like 40 pounds lighter and uh i we have similar speech patterns and he could easily play my father assuming that i would ever be talented enough for him to think that but it probably won't ever happen regardless um and then i open up my mouth and at least at that point in time i was much more confident in my comedy and my humor to where i was i was kind of very much a a a brassy honest comedic woman um and so that's where that that's where that um idea of why I said Michael C. and Kathy Griffin and that's what I think they were trying to get from which is also just essentially me saying like I I utilize the skills in each of these genres and each of these groups each of these each of the reasons why these things are marketable um, to, to help you understand me a little bit more from a very short time. I had such a hard time with that uh, with that with that exercise or mm-hmm. with that yeah. assignment. Uh, I I just had a really hard time actually finding myself in other people that were there. Like, like it would be, we had like Jim Carrey. Isn't that good? Isn't that supposed to be a good I thing? Guess, I guess that's my thing. Is like I look at it and I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to try and replace like somebody that's already there. You know, like I don't want to try and. Then don't. Yeah. It was, it was that thing. But I mean, like just when it comes to like having like somebody to base yourself off of. Because like, the closest I came up with, I think was like Jim Carrey, Michael J. Fox, and Jack Lemmon. Mm-hmm. And it's like, which are all pretty accurate. But it feels like all the stuff that I can do in regards to them is like that's a character I can do, you mm-hmm. know. But I feel like, and it's also weird because like I always, I, like all through school, I kept being told different things about like mm-hmm. what I could do. I know like uh, before I came out, like when I, like in high school, uh, it was always like, oh, you always, I always played the clowns. 
and it was always like the comedic relief even like the, even in like the holocaust play i was the comedic relief and uh and then i came out here and they're like no you're not funny no, you can't do comedy and so it became who like, said that became all drama. like every teacher no they did not like every teacher they like so they said that i wasn't good with comedic material um so i was doing nothing but dramatic stuff which you were great at and then uh so i did like i did shabbat dinner which was comedic a it was a comedy <laughs> yes it was a comedy i said the acting but it had like a fairly heavy scene um and then I did like might of matter and out i did like a couple other student shorts that were all like heavy dramas and didn't really have much in the way of comedy uh and then I like slid it for a long time. The only actual comedic footage that I had to show people was stuff that I shot myself. Mm -hmm. And now it's like everybody looks at me and they, and they think that I'm just comedy. And it's just like it's it's bizarre. Yeah, I feel like it's changed like constantly. And I think it's just because people see different sides of you based on who you're around. Because I know that I changed drastically. Uh, I was talking to before we started recording this mm -hmm. uh, like a month and a half ago. I was talking to a friend about like wanting to make more YouTube content, and uh, and he said that I needed to find somebody who was very expressive uh, to, to like bounce off of because I'm not a very expressive person. But then there, <laughs> okay. is, but, but then there are some people I know who think that I'm just insane all the time. Uh, so I, it, I, just, I just am different around different people, I guess. And I think it's just how people are. I, I don't know. I mean, yes. That's also anything anybody says about you is a reflection of themselves first and foremost. Don't ever take anything personally. So if somebody says you're not good at something, that's also just an It means that they're bad at it. Yes. Um, or He's they, not very Or they expensive. have insecurities about it themselves. Um, different the, different what, what, people different people perceive different things and I've what, never seen you as anything but comedic. Like, and, and I've always seen the fact that you are so specifically intelligent and so specifically humorous that you were able to utilize those specific skills in what made drama so, I guess, captivating. What made you doing drama so captivating? The stepping going... On, stepping on a rake, getting hit in the face with a pie. Classic dramatic techniques. I'm sorry. That is specifically what I was talking about. Um, no, I, I'm going to go back to this a scene. We all, all acting students will always do scenes from plays that they should never be doing scenes from. Except for it, if they just do. None, none of us students should ever do scenes from Angels in America unless we're actually A, that That's age, fair. and B, at the, like the, have that skill set. There's no at reason. That, that There's, no reason. There's no reason. There's no reason. But anyways, um, but the scene that you and Chelsea Blackman did with Rabbit Hole... Yeah. Is to this day, and a, you would still be great in that role. But that was that was the first time I did anything good in that uh, in 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 that school. I, I I'm not gonna talk to you about good or bad. That was that was a fantastic performance, but it had nothing that would. If we're gonna talk about what we learned from that school, what Carol would say is, does it work or doesn't it, and why? And that scene worked extremely well because you understood the stillness, you understood the importance of it, but you also understood the the humor and the the um awkwardness uh, specifically it wasn't, about it wasn't that. about going into it and going like all right we're all gonna be sad for five minutes no of course it was it was just being in a situation i mean that's and what but once again what was really captivating about that was it was this it was this kid who you could tell is is funny and is light-hearted or at least it wants to be funny and wants to be light-hearted and wants to um wants to be a kid wants like, to be a kid and yeah. he's put into a really really shitty situation and he now has to in this specific sense go or in this specific scene go and uh at least attempt to make this woman whose child you took away feel better yeah. and how do you do that and how do you be lighthearted? and how do you how do you utilize the levity in that situation that doesn't really allow for any which is where those stillnesses come, came from which is why you two looking at each other or not looking at each other or sitting next to each other or not sitting next to each other was so important anybody else who did that would have just tried to cry the entire time or just tried to be I, I guess and once and Chelsea Blackman is also one of the funniest like like people that I know specifically so having those the two fun, like the two funniest people in our class do the most heartbreaking scene. It's funny because Amy's one of the people who thought that I couldn't do comedy. I, yeah, but I, 
I love Amy. Amy has sometimes warped views of how people, what people are good at, what people aren't, where people are at, where people are not. It's also just what she saw in that class. Right, exactly. Because um, it's, um, there are many times where she was just like spot on. She's like, I can tell this from you. And it was right. And I'd be like, oh, you're right. That is absolutely correct. And then she would like congratulate herself. She'd be like, see, I knew this. Was he, I love it. I, I love her. I, none of these things are bad. I think this was awesome. But then there were certain times where she would like call things out because she thought that's what the what it, what we were saying or who we were and it yeah, wasn't. Yeah, I remember one of those. Situations. But yes. Yeah. So um, once again, you can't base who you think you are and who how you present yourself to the world off of what your teachers or what other people have said about you. That's you right. could like you know you don't like even me saying that I saw you and I've always seen you as someone who's funny and lighthearted. Like that that's my perception of you. That's my experience with you based off of who I am and what my life experience is. Yeah. Does that make sense? I think you're a very expressive person, but if somebody else doesn't think so, then oh the fuck well. Well, well cuz that's the funny thing is like yeah, like you'll be like you'll say like oh yeah, Jim Carrey, very apt comparison. And he's just like, oh, you're not very expressive. Yeah. It's like, it's just like, it's, yeah. yeah it's, so I've heard, I've heard many different things, many different times. And I, and I'm like, I don't, I don't take too much stock in it. Also, you're going to hear me like bumping into this microphone every three seconds. Yeah. Thanks for that. You're welcome. All right. Uh, so yes, yeah, so let's talk about, uh, the work we've done in the last month, what we've accomplished, uh, uh what we haven't. Um, here's the thing. Can I go first so we can end on a light note? Because mine's not very light. And it's oh, not very good. Oh, uh, yeah. Good. Who died? Sorry. Nobody died. No, nobody died. It's just a matter of, like, disappointment. And, uh, like, in the sense that, like, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I had a month. And I'm I'm the poster child for procrastination. Um, and any free time that I did have, I didn't actually utilize for writing. Um, not for any, and I can give you, I can give you excuse after excuse after excuse. Um, and I probably will because it's literally what happened. However, um, as I said earlier, the only reason, like I, I didn't get anything done is because I, I didn't get it done and that's on me and it's kind of, um, but, uh, I haven't personally felt very inspired to do a lot of things. Um, I have this one project that I've been talking about that I've been feeling really great about that every time I sit down to look at it. It just seems like it's kind of too far away from me right now. Too far away from you, how? Um, as in, I've decided... I wrote I wrote several scenes for this play that I thought was going to be really good, and I had this complete idea for this play, and the way that I had the play ending, it was a two-person play on one specific set, and the way that it ended... Um, was kind of ambiguous and that's what I wanted um, but I also wanted to show growth from that and the scenes were received so well that I wanted to translate them into a web series and with the play format with one set with two people I couldn't think of anything I couldn't I, or I could think of it I could think of things but I couldn't think of things that were just like so compelling to make like an hour and a half or like however long I wanted this play to be but when I sat down and I started structuring out a web series a lot more came and I was also allowed to, to to introduce more characters and more settings and more themes and um when you gave me the uh the advice of making every episode kind of a story like a full story in and of itself it kind of helped to to, to break things down <clears throat> And so I have the basic outline of every single episode and who's in it and what they're doing and what they want. I just, every time I sit down to try to write an episode, I get caught on the technical aspects of writing a, a film script, which is, which is making me a hypocrite because I yelled at you earlier for, <laughs> but no, it is, it's, it's daunting. And, and the only reason why I was able to yell at you the way, the, the way that I did was because Jordan yelled at me about the exact same thing which I still can't figure out how to fix I don't, I'm not confident in how things are supposed to look on a screen I'm not confident in when I write words down uh, or when I write uh, these actions down I'm, I'm, I, I don't know exactly how they're supposed to look and in my head 
the script the few film scripts that I know are short scenes that are very impactful because of the visual elements that you get you know and I'm 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 a playwright so I just I, I write dialogue and the dialogue informs the actors and the actions and how they move and interact within within a space in front of an audience um, with no cuts and no takes no this and I, and I don't know for what and once again these are all excuses these are all excuses that I'm actually actively using to to kind of for whatever reason tell myself that I can't do this when I should kind of take my own medicine and just fucking do it do you know what i mean yeah so that's what's happening on my end as far as progression um once again i also just started a new job that has taken up a lot of my energy and so because it's taken up a lot of my energy anytime i'm home and not at work I feel less compelled to exert any energy towards anything that I view as work. I feel that. It can be draining. Um, I mean, that's, but I, yeah, I... But I had to... That, that was one of the reasons why I had to leave my, uh, the, the job that I had was just because it had gotten to the point where I couldn't make things anymore. It became, like, very uh, demanding and, like, consuming, and it was just, like, all that I could really think about, and it was just not a good place to be in. I uh, got busier than I thought I was going to, so I didn't get as much done as I wanted. I didn't finish the pilot. Uh, but I started putting some of it down, and I finished the last scene for Sparks. And so now I'm in the process of going through and making sure that I didn't forget something, or that there's no, like, glaring continuity, because now I've got, like, this long thing of, like, all these scenes, and i got to make sure that, like, I'm not they all work invalidating and myself. Yeah, like, <laughs> proofreading and, like, checking a, sh a short film script is so much easier <laughs> than something that, like, spans... A way bigger period of time. Do you know how how and this is gonna sound weird? Do you know how time works specifically in um, in film scripts and things of this nature? Because in plays, in a standard uh, play script, each page is supposed to be roughly a minute long. So if you have a ninety page script, you'll know on average it's gonna be about an hour and a half. Yeah, you, you, generally speaking, if you're writing like a comedy, you want it to be around a hundred. Okay. Um, but the, the thing there is because there's so much more, uh, not stage direction, because there's, there's so, because there's so much more like action mm -hmm. written into the script, uh, if you have a page that's like all dialogue, because of the way that, it's, that a, the screenplay is formatted, if you have a page that is like all dialogue, generally speaking, it's going to go very fast. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you're not using up much of the page, and the font is generally larger. than a, And again, it depends on the format, because there are some plays that are, that are formatted. Mm -hmm. uh, differently, so they take up more space and everything. But like the general, like Samuel French, uh, you know, or dramatist, like right. like script, mm -hmm. um, about a minute a page, yeah. Right. And it's supposed to be like all dialogue. Uh, with a screenplay, it's harder to tell because it depends on is this all action? Is this a montage? Because if it's a montage, it's going to go a lot faster than it looks like. Right. Uh, oh, because absolutely. you've got a bunch of like two second shots that you're taking like fifteen seconds to describe. Uh, because oh, oh, I take longer. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Go totally. On. But uh, so 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 it depends on that. And I'm hovering. I'm actually on the low end right now. Okay. So that's the nice thing is I can just add things from here if I want to. But I feel like I've got like a full. I feel like I've got like the full story in place now, and so it's just like checking everything and making sure I didn't do something stupid and completely leave out like a vital plot point mm -hmm. that I just never got around to for some reason. Right. Uh, making sure that I don't uh, invalidate something that happened earlier with something that I wrote later. Making sure I'm not repeating myself. And probably I should hand it off to somebody else, but I just want to read through it first and just make sure that I've done everything I can to make sure I've got all that stuff and then pass it off to other people to proofread. Okay, and then after the proofreading, what's... After the proofreading, uh, I want to do like an actual reading. Okay. Have a couple people come in. Uh, the nice thing is like it's... I. I could probably do it with like five people and cover everything, just with the way that it's laid out. It's, it's like three main characters, and then a, co a couple people to handle just like all the side characters that come in, and you know, like the people who do main characters can handle other characters when they're not in the scene, and all that. So just get a couple people together, and just do a small like private reading, just to see how it all sounds. Because mm -hmm. that's that's like a big thing is just actually hearing it spoken uh, is very different than seeing it on paper. Right. There's a lot of words and sentences that seem weird and incorrect 
uh, when you see them written out, but then you say it and you're like, no, I guess that's actually how it goes. I mean, that's one of the reasons um, why I'm specifically comfortable with dialogue. Um, one of my favorite playwrights, uh, Paula Vogel, says that the words are the least important aspect of a script. Um, which makes uh, specifically for me a lot of sense because um, words can be changed. Yes. We're, like words can easily be changed and with dialogue um, with dialogue you're dealing with humans and humans uh, naturally especially depending on the education level that they have in the class and the this that and the other um, don't always speak properly so yeah. you don't like it's not like we're writing novels it's not like we're writing oh, books where we're like we don't have to specifically focus on the very perfect structure of everyone's speech we just have to write how people write we just have to write how people speak and a lot of the times people people fumble people um I have tra- people utilize different kind of like slang and they, especially with who you're talking to people change the way that they talk and their sentence structures based off of who they're specifically speaking to. So when you have a script where it's words and the, the line doesn't sound right, you have the opportunity to hear that line and say, nope, I don't like yeah. that. I'm going to change that. And that's, and that's why I want to do a reading and just see how it all sounds. Mm-hmm. But first, I just want to make sure that I'm not missing something completely obvious and stupid. So I just want to go over it a couple times and just read it through and just I mean, make and sure you, it's you, not... You might. You probably are, but... It's... I probably am, because it's... Because yeah. you have in your head exactly how it's structured, so until somebody else, assuming anybody else, yeah. So that's exciting. But with the pilot, I'm really excited about that. I've got the opening written out, because I just want to make sure I wrote it out the way that I saw it before I forget. That was the main thing. I was just, just writing out that opening, because the opening is like what sparked the whole thing. Hmm. Um, other than that, like, yeah, I could probably would have... I'm directing another movie now. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to. Uh, like a couple weeks ago, like that suddenly became a thing. So now, like we're in the casting process. Oh yeah, this is with Daniel. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And so I'm doing that, and so that's been interesting because like I'm directing something that I didn't that I didn't write, and uh, so it's a bit of a different feel than what I'm used to. Uh, but you know, it's been. It's been fun and I'm excited for it. I can't. I can't tell if you're excited for it. I was just about to say. I feel like you're literally. Oh, I'm just. Like... <laughs> I'm, just I'm just. I'm just thinking about like the process that's ahead of me and just going like, you all right. S- you seem a lot more daunted than anything. I just got done with like a huge, <laughs> with like that with like that big uh, thing that I talked about like in the last pod- podcast. Oh, yeah. I'm, f- I'm finishing up like the edit on it now and I just send off the they're off. It's just a lot going on right now. <laughs> there is a lot going on, but that's where you thrive. That's literally how yeah. you've always thrived, and that's yeah. uh, that, and that's what's actually cool. allowed you to be doing as much as you do yeah and it's cool because like at the rate that i'm going right now i might actually have like a studio space in a couple months and so once, if i have a studio space to work out of then i feel like i'll be more productive because i'll be like okay i'm gonna go here and i'm just gonna work here and like i won't i won't be at home i won't be surrounded by uh by my friends and like by more distractions uh it'll be more isolated Mm -hmm. and i can and when i need to do something i can just like if i want to if I want to produce like some YouTube stuff, like I can just go there. I don't got to worry about noise being around. It's in a quieter area, and it would be like a studio space to get work done. That and sounds awesome. <laughs> so that's that's been a big thing because it's oh god. Because then I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm like producing this. There, there's like this feature that I'm working on, but it's one of those movies where it's a series of short films that are put together to make a feature. And so we're we're gearing that up, and we want to start shooting the first parts of that next month. So we're supposed to have a meeting on that, about that on Saturday. So moral of the story is you just don't stop. I'm casting on Friday. Oh my god. As a, as a, as a wise woman once I just said. got busier than I thought I was going to, which is cool. <laughs> Wait, it's so interesting that you, you always seem so confused by how busy you get yourself. I don't even realize. Even though you stay just as busy as you were before when you were also confused about how busy you were. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then I've been doing like weekly YouTube stuff, so like I've been trying to stay on top of that, mm-hmm. which is what we're doing right now. Which is, in, in, honest, um, in all honesty, this is this is the most active I've been, uh, and most consistent that I've been with anything that I've tried to do because I have I have tried I have tried so hard to get people to do silly little projects here in the city and and for years for years and. I get that people 
are busy. I totally, totally, totally get that people are busy. Um, and I get that everybody has their own individual lives and doesn't always have time to specifically focus on the little projects that I want to focus on. And I also don't have, I guess, nearly as good um, management and directing and will like uh, skills or like willpower that I'd like to possess. So the fact that we are doing this and Max versus PC, like on a regular on like a relatively regular basis it's it's nice it's making me feel like i'm actually doing something that's fair but you know what i mean yeah and that's that's why i wanted to like when i you know when i got out of the day job and like decided like that i was going to try to be doing this for a living it was like that's one thing i wanted to separate myself was like i want to be just constantly creating especially because like right away like the work didn't come right away you know like the first month I was kind of like sitting around like mm -hmm. trying to get something to come in, which is just the way that it goes, I guess. Uh, and when I think back about it, I've, I've really only been out for three months. And so it's a relatively short amount of time for like what I've gotten done. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> but it's also still like, it's so weird getting paid in like a less uh, consistent way. Mm -hmm. That's That's been like the biggest thing. Was like I feel like I'm still constantly stressed about money because you now it's like see and that's my thing I can't do that that was it was it was the thing that I was most scared about it was why I wanted to keep a day job for as long as I did was because it was like I can get consistent paycheck like I know that I'll have this money here but here it's like it's you're like you're picking soul. up different jobs yeah. and you know they uh, you don't know when the money's actually gonna come. You don't know how long they're going to take to actually send it in. Mm -hmm. uh, I just recently had like a bunch of jobs pay off. I found out that a commercial that I did that I'm actually going to that I actually made the final cut for it. So I'm, I'm getting like another I'm getting like another payment from them. So that's cool. Awesome. <laughs> uh, and I'm doing I'm doing like a I have like I have like a day part on this short. It's like a voiceover thing that I'm shooting next week. So I'll get paid for that. So that's nice. I'm about to like actually get like some breathing room so i feel like i'll be less stressed out about that because for a couple months it was it was worrisome just because it was like i was just, i was just like freaking out that like I, I wouldn't know where like my rent would be coming from but it all worked out and i i, I kept I, I kept getting enough to get by and now like i'm actually yeah. starting to catch up and so that's, that's that's nice and that makes sense and i feel like you and i both have always kind of lived on this you a lot better than I have of this um, idea that even at even at the most stressful, even at the most financially, like I guess uh, shitty that we've been. Um, we've been pretty financially shitty. Oh, we've been terrible. We've been the most financially shitty. Um, even then, we know in one way, shape, or form something has to get done, and either we're going to make it or we're going to leave and I don't think leaving for either of us has ever been an option so we just have to find a way to make it um, and you, what, I, what I'm what i most impressed about with you is that you've actually decided to actively take steps towards making it in a field that you A. came here to do and B. actually are very passionate about doing it only took seven years what do you mean? It only took seven years. Do you know how many? Do you know how long it <laughs> no, takes I know. a lot and of it's, people? And it's, and, it's like, terrifying. and I understand why a lot of people don't, because it's it's terrifying. And it, but it, it was kind of the thing of like when I like, like when I came out here, it was like you know they're saying like oh you know you should get a degree as a backup. I'm like I don't think I can have a backup. I feel like if I have a backup and I give myself a way out of it, yeah. then that gives me an excuse and it gives me a way to not actually pursue this. Right. Which has made it terrifying because I can't get, like, a great salaried position anywhere, you know? But, like, it got me out here. Right. And it made me stay here, and it made me start working in this, and this just kind of feels like an extension of it. I mean, yeah, that's kind of, that's... Like, working, because oh, working that day job, as, as terrible as it was, I was staying in it, because it was comfortable and it was safe, mm -hmm. you know? And, uh... I kind of forced myself to have to make my living off of this yeah. So. I, I mean, and that's, once again, that is what's inspiring to me, and that's what I've kind of been wanting to do, That, but I've never actually, like, A, had the guts, or B, had, like, the, 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 um, I get the wherewithal to actually get it done, because I'm very prideful, and I'm, I, I like knowing that I'm doing a good job with whatever job that I'm doing. Same. 
Um, and I know at some of these some of these uh, service industry jobs, it is like it's almost a very specific one-two step on how to do well in this industry. And once you grasp onto that, it's really fucking simple to just say, "I know how to do this." Like, I I, so I you're just talking about like waiting tables. Yeah, or? just like I just started. I just started my new job as an assistant manager, and I I went in and I had no idea what the fuck I was doing or how to do it. And I I I realized that the reason why I was so scared is because it's the first position in this industry that I found that is not very specifically like these are the steps of like this is the steps of operation these specifically is um or the the steps of service you know you must greet every customer you must make sure um to create an atmosphere of of warmth and welcomeness you must make sure to to be very specific about your your drinks um you know create how how do you how do you mix the drinks how do you get them in on time how do you make sure that every single person is taken care of like all like all of all of those steps on what it means to be a good bartender or be a good server are literally just rules that you check off like i do this i do this i do this i do this this is the equation for success therefore i will be successful at this therefore i will focus my time on what i know for sure i will be successful on but now you're in a position where it's like right when you go in every day you don't know what's going to happen exactly you you don't know what the problem and i know that i'm going to be responsible for for finding for for finding some magical way of fixing it at all times and i think that's that that area of uncomfortability is what's kind of made me not actively take a, a bigger role in the audition process or in the acting or in my acting or in my writing because there is no there is no checklist there is no this is specifically how to be successful there's you do you show what you have you give the best that you have and you have to figure it out as it comes to you yeah, there's, anything there's, there's that, no easy guide. Yeah, anything that rolls your way, you just have to figure it out. I definitely, no, I definitely feel that. Because, like, yeah, when we, I mean, we've worked a couple jobs together. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've worked at, like, four different places together, honestly. Disney Store, uh, two handles. restaurants, 16 Handles, and then those two restaurants that we speak about their name. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think that there, there was something very seductive to me just about doing a job that wasn't very difficult. Because, like, I know that I could be good at it, and uh, so it was nice. And I, and I always had that mindset of, like, if I'm going to be doing this job, like, mm-hmm. I'm going to do it well. As much as I complained about not having time to, like, work on my stuff mm-hmm. at the last job I was at, like, part of me really liked feeling like I was needed there. Mm-hmm. And as, as, as much as it stressed me out, I was kind of addicted to it. If you're going to get addicted to a job, get addicted to one that you love. Yeah. Managing time is weird because now there's nobody to manage it for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's uh, it's happening, so I have to get, I have to figure it out. Well, I think that's I think that's great. I feel like um, things that are stressing you out are things that are good. I think they're a good place for you to be. I think you and I are in very opposite places. You're doing borderline too much. I'm doing absolutely not enough. Do you, Do you want to take some of my work? Uh, totally, if, it, <laughs> if it's paying. Don't worry, let, me, let me teach you how to edit. Yeah, please. Okay. I should. I should learn how to do all of these things um, because that's smart. That's one thing I've been but, thinking about with this, with the YouTube um, stuff is just like, because it is like basically just still just like a one man mm-hmm. operation. I brought in, you know, I brought in some of my friends for a lot of this stuff. I'm doing a show with Tyler now. Great. And that's uh, all well and good, but I'm still doing all the editing and everything. And with everything else that's going on, it's just kind of like maybe I should try to find a way. To get some more of this, to get some of this done by somebody else, just so what? I have more time. Mm-hmm. You're tech savvy, so and I'm not, so I can try to. I can learn. I can. I can. I can learn. But uh, <laughs> um, it's weird. I, I feel time passing a lot more now. Okay. Because like before, it would be like, oh my god, months have passed and I haven't done anything. Look at the day job because mm-hmm. I have this to distract me. Now, like every day, it's just like I'm not getting enough done. Like, right. Like, I'm not gonna... And then I look back and I'm like, it's only been three months since I started doing this. And then I look back at like what I've done since then. And it's like I've actually done a lot. Yeah. But like, it feels time just feels like it's going a lot slower. They always say time goes faster when you're doing a lot of things when you're doing when you're. Well, that's you're... the thing is, it's like I because I don't have a day job now. Five days a week, my day would just be my job. Right. You know, I would and I, I wouldn't have the energy to do anything else other than that, and I, I, would, I would shut down, and that would be my day. It's kind of weird. So, 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 so it'd be like two days a week where like I could maybe actually do something. 
Um, and, uh, and now it's like the exact opposite of that. And so now I have like all these days where it's like, I have all this time. Nobody's telling me I have to do anything with any of that time. And so I just feel it pass so much slower. No, that makes complete sense. See, for me, it's I, I go into work tomorrow and I don't have another day off till Monday, which is completely fine, which is first world problems. It's wonderful. There are people who work seven days a week and don't stop and don't have days off for like uh, uh, like months at a time. And I get that. I've existed that. I've experienced that. And I don't like it. It's, it, <laughs> I, sucks. it's, it sucks. It sucks. And even these three days a week um, kind of take a lot out of me. And I need, but my only problem is I'm not doing anything with my free time uh, to, to get me out of that. And so maybe that's something that I should focus on. Just make the series explode. Just make the web series and it'll be famous True. and it'll all be over. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, and that's, it's sad because I'm such, I'm such an egotist that in my head, this script is bomb. Like, this script you just gotta get a good, gotta get a good like, production team. The mind. script is good. The it script is, is script. fun. The script is accessible. Like I, it's about a gay couple where I've had like straight people come up and say that they understood it. But like, um, it's almost like we're just human. Yeah, I don't. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's almost but, like it's almost like affection is affection. Like that was the, that was the weirdest thing when I just about dinner was when I got questions like, how did you? They're, they're like, how did you do like the gay thing? And I was just like, well, I like. I know what it's like to like lust after a girl, so I just kind of like put that onto a guy instead. It's remarkably True. the same actual feeling, but <laughs> like, it's, I mean, really. Or not. Um, like, no, that's and that's like, amazing. And I mean, at, uh, side note, and we get into the side. Uh, was it Ben Affleck is is under some uh, flat for some bullshit for he Batman. said? Batman. No, for some bullshit he said about his. Uh, Say hi to the fire trucks. Um, no, he had a he had a same sex kiss in Chasing Amy which was in the 90s and in the 90s he said um, kissing another man is uh, the greatest challenge an actor will ever have to face it depends, I will say this I have had one stage kiss with a guy where uh, he had shaven like the day before and that was one of the most painful kisses I've ever had <laughs> so I will say in that sense it is very different from kissing a woman well, there's um, that, but no, it's, it, but it's, uh, Evan Rachel Woods came out and she like called him out on it and was like, um, it's all like kissing another person is not the big video and also grow up, but which is absolutely correct. But A, he said it in the nineties, probably has grown up since then. And B, another, another big problem of it is just like, just assuming that just, just it being two men is just the worst thing in the world that a heterosexual could experience. As opposed to just like being a fucking actor and doing a job, um, there's and somebody, realizing there's that, somebody who had to make out with a dog in something I saw. What was that? I thought that was actually a movie and not some kind of weird porn. Pretty sure it's a movie. The moral of the story is I think my script is awesome um, because I'm really, it's, really it's, into it's, it, and it's so a really good I have this this borderline delusion of grandeur that as soon as it actually does get up on its feet that it will be this huge successful thing that everybody love on the scale of from my experience what i can really compare it to is like east ciders which is a really cool the thing that it's really going to come down to honestly has less to do with whether it's good or not which it will be good as long as you get a good team behind it and you have people who know how to make it but it really just comes down to do you get people to see it right Exactly. How do you market it? And that's How do you get and that it? is my thing because I've never been that. I've never been good at that. I've never been big social media presence. I've never been. Anyways, but in my head, this thing is going to be so great that I'll I'll get I'll get famous and I'll get big and blah blah blah. Exactly what you said, which is which is something that I'm trying to like keep away from, and I'm trying to find 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 some way to be monetarily uh, successful in my for me as well as making my my presence my. I, I who I am and selling myself as an actor and as a writer and as a as a personality m making that kind of my main way of making money and as opposed to just writing this thing that I assume is going to be amazing and then it gets out there and nobody likes it and it's not even as good as they think it is and well you know what I mean so like I'm tr I'm, I'm trying not to assume that everything that I'm writing is going to get me a bunch of fame I'm just writing what I want to write to 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 show that I can write truthfully, um, and I can write characters that people can access and people can resonate with. While I find, I guess, how I survive 
in uh, if elsewhere. You, if you do it well, it will lead to more work. Right. Um, I can't guarantee that it'll be paid work right away. Of course. But, like, doing something good will get you work. That is always the hardest part, is, like, you know, I'm, I'm making, like... I'm making my living off of the technical side of film, because selling myself as a person is weird. It's mm-hmm. easier to sell skills. Like, it's easier to mm-hmm. sell, like, oh, I can edit. I can do this thing or this thing. Uh, but when it comes to, like, acting, it is so hard to separate... So much of it has to do with selling, like, who you are as, like, a person and your personality. Mm-hmm. And that's just never been my strong suit. It's always been this, like, a weird, dirty feeling to me. <laughs> and it shouldn't be, because it's, it's literally part of the job. But, like, it's yeah. it's so weird. I see people, like, try to, try to like, hype themselves up. See, I get... And it's, like, it's just them trying to do their job. It just feels gross to me. This feels gross. Yeah, no, I totally get that. But I, I, I kind of see both sides, because that's how I felt just about selling things in general. I felt very uncomfortable at my first retail position just because it was yeah. like these like I'm selling you garbage. I'm selling you stuff that you don't need and it's my job to make you feel like you need it I, and pay way too much for it. I can't. And then yeah. I realized very quickly it was just like it's it's a job. It's a job. It's nothing personal. It's literally a, just doing a, the best that you like it's it's literally just like doing what you need to do to get the job done. I have a really hard time promoting things that I don't believe in. Yeah, which, like which is likewise. something I need to get over. Right. But like, it's same here. Okay. I don't know. So speaking about things that we need to do, what do we, what are we going to say that we need to do within the next month? I want to actually have the reading uh, for Sparks. I want to get that moving because I want to, as quickly as possible, start getting people attached to the project who want to see this made Mm -hmm. Uh, because it can't just be me trying to put it together. Right. Not something on this scale. Mm -hmm. Like I'll I'll do a lot of it. I'll do everything I can, but I need somebody who, I I need to find people who will also help me put this stuff together. Right. And so the first step of that is going to be getting a reading, probably inviting some people to come see it who I'm interested in, uh, Mm -hmm. not just their opinions, but also their work ethic. And uh, I want to finish the pilot so that I also have that in Mm -hmm. my pocket. I feel like that will be a very fast thing to write. Honestly, because I, I feel like I already know exactly what I want to do, and it's just giving myself. Isn't that such a lovely feeling? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just hoping that I don't forget what I want to write before I write it. Right. That's that's the main thing. For me, actually, actually write something. Actually, fucking write something. I feel like that's kind of too disappointing. I feel like I should do something more. Should I give myself something more to kind of take a dance class? I don't... <laughs> well, yeah, learn to dance. Yeah, that's. I think that's what I'm really. Well, I mean lacking other personal goals well i want to act more one of the things that i my i have a problem is i have a very clear idea of what will get me um successful in the way that i want in the time that i want and 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 the steps that i need to take to that all are require like oh well you can't get there until you do this you can't get there until you do this you can't get there until you do this like it's a stepping stone thing. No, yeah. I, I totally get and that. So That's what I, I have to try to find out how, like, how do you how do you gain these skills? How do you meet these people? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was a very long. That was like so, a five year process for me to get like where I am right now. Just finding people that I want to work with, gaining equipment, uh, learning how to use that equipment, learning how to mm-hmm. use the software, learning how to organize things. I think I do need to. Do you have the first episode of the uh, web series done? Yeah. I have... Maybe you should start working on getting ready to make that. Yeah? Yeah. You don't need to have every episode finished to shoot one. What you work on is start working on getting together the people. So, I mean, casting's a big thing. Yes. Who's going to be this other person? That's, yeah. Uh, and Cause, then... Because I'm going to be the lead. Then figuring out, you know, who, how you're going to do it, yeah. where you're going to do it, who's going to make it with you. You have me as a resource for any of that. Uh, oh, I But I think that if you have the first episode written... If you're having an issue with the writing, then do the other stuff that you can do, which is start going into production on the first one. Start start getting that made. Because if you do get that made, and it does develop interest from somebody, yeah. anybody, even mm-hmm. a couple people, that can open up more possibilities for funding, for making the rest of it, for uh, the, the scope of the project can increase. There's so much that you can do but you might as well be trying to make this first one. Right. That makes complete sense, and I think that's that's absolutely something I can do. Taking a couple steps, I can at least get it cast. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And you know, I, I, I honestly find, like, writing gets easier sometimes once you know who the cast is. Yeah. So you can write for people. I know Back to One was so easy to write because I knew everybody I was writing for. Yeah. Uh, 
Gareth, a lot of the issues that I was having with Gareth, once we did the casting, and I saw who we were using, uh, made a lot of changes yeah. that fit those people better, or I got ideas for additional scenes or additional jokes off of those people and what they brought and, and what their voice was. And uh, so I think, yeah, you might as well just start moving with it. Okay. That's, thank you for giving my goal for the month. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so next month's class, we'll, uh, hopefully we'll make so I'll probably already know if you've made progress on that because I'll probably be talking to you about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hopefully I'll have a full pilot to show people, not shot and everything, but written. Yeah. Um, and uh, and that's where we'll be. Should we... On the next month's episode, we'll probably have a guest. Uh, I, I have a couple people I want to bring on. Um, I didn't this month because I was like, eh, the first official like episode probably shouldn't. Uh, since the first one was like a, a, a zero episode, like a, like a meet the meet, a meet the meet, meet the family sort of thing. Oh yeah. Meet the queens. Yeah. yeah. Meet the queens family. <laughs> But uh, I do know some people who are interested and yeah. whose perspe perspectives I think would be interesting to bring on. Uh, oh, so I think that for the next one we'll do that. So if you have any questions, uh, please let us know. Um, uh, we're always open to, if there's anything you want us to talk about. If you have any themes specifically that you would like to hear about or that you have questions about, that you yeah. think that we can, we can bullshit our way through. Leave this in my hands as little as possible. <laughs> um, this is basically what I'm trying to get at. We'll see you guys next time. Okay. Bye. Have to wave. They're not gonna see it. <laughs> They'll know. They, uh, the they will know. Time. They, they can. They can. They can hear the action in your voice. You know what? Yeah.